Subscribing to the Crunchyroll YouTube channel was one of the biggest mistakes I've ever made. See, I have the attention span of a particularly stupid insect. Therefore, every once in a while I'll see a trailer on their channel, I'll watch it, and then I'll go immediately watch that new anime regardless of what I should be doing and waste my time and after watching a few episodes never watch anything again. It's been a constant problem and I know the answer is to just unsubscribe but again I'm not particularly smart. So when I saw a show called Symphogear, and I saw the transformation sequence of the main character Hibiki, I decided, this looks cool, let's watch a couple of episodes. So I sat down to watch the first three episodes of the first season, binged the entire season, and sat there wondering, what the actual hell had I just watched? And then over the coming days, I proceeded to binge the entire rest of the series up till now. So... I just have one single question. Who is this for? Who Who is this series for? Because I am legitimately, completely, and utterly confused by this. In the first season, here's a few things that happened. A bunch of creatures get released on an arena, which are basically all individual sapient Thanos snaps. The main character gets absolutely and utterly wrecked and nearly dies. One girl raises all of the death flags, proceeds to melt in her friend's arms. This other girl at one point nearly kills main girl, gets her sword punch exploded by this dude who apparently humans can just learn how to do that. And for some reason we need magical girls with people like them around. There, there's actually a pretty good reason for this, but just I just wanted to put that out there. But yeah, then she does this, this screenshot, which I'm showing. Future me, please show the screenshot of something that happens to her. Also, a bunch of people just straight up get murked. There's your typical magical girl shenanigans. Also, by the way, the first magical girl transformation the main character goes through looks like something that would come out of Mr. Lovecraft's thought pits. And it's just, it's, it's honestly kind of sort of like, what am, what is this show? Who is this for? I ask again. Just, Simpho Gear is a trip, because on one hand, on the very basic level, this looks like your typical anime, fantasy anime, magical girl, future thing. Just, it looks, there's like shades of like... First of all, they go through all this thing of like there was a precursor civilization that had super advanced technology and all of the, you know, legends and legendary artifacts and weapons you've ever heard in history, all of those were actually super sick music based technology. But then it turns out that there are alchemists who are basically straight up wizards in this series. And also there's the background story, which is basically can be summed up as this one thought was very thirsty for someone who lived on the moon and that guy on the moon was like nah thought and decided to inflict the curse of babel on people which if you don't know the curse of babel it's referencing to the story of the tower of babel which is basically like someone made a tower to reach the heavens and that pissed god off so he destroyed it and removed everyone's ability to speak the same language forcing us to all have different languages literally christian mythology is that god is a guy on the moon and he was like nah thought and decided to punish this thirsty woman by cursing the entire world also he's responsible for noise also there's a lot of vaguely christian symbolism in the first season like at one point they go like oh yeah that's the red beast of revelation and like they stop like just short of like i was just i was like I was surprised when they didn't call her the Whore of Babylon, because this show would totally do that. Like, there's no cursing in this show. The, you know, the worst thing that anyone ever says is, what the hell is this? But at the same time, in this same show, there's politicians getting killed by mercenary organizations. Like, straight up headshot, you see the blood came out. There's, you know, the climax song, which always leaves the people looking bleeding from every orif which orifice which is great and then there's like there's stuff like oh my gosh like just ah what is this show 
Also, by the way, the, the just I don't understand this show because, like I said, there's regular, typical magical girl hijinks and slice of life stuff. There's the battles, which are all really well animated and are really hype. There's the girls singing about friendship and stuff, while at the same time, like, Hibiki is like your typical, really good, I don't want to hurt people protagonist, which is weird because she's a punch girl, and she's surprisingly good at it. But at the same time, she's teamed up with a cast of characters who are basically soldiers and will merc people if they need to. Like, at one point, like, there's this one point where the manager of one of the original magical girls who, you know, just reveals himself to actually be a ninja. Like, straight up a ninja. And I don't mean just that he's really sneaky. I mean, he's having a conversation on the phone with one of the, with the ch commander, Mr. Punch's swords, punch, you know, punch explode a sword the size of a building. And then it cuts to him and he had just murked an entire Yakuza. Just an entire Yakuza den. Everyone is dead. One dude is pierced to the couch th through with a sword. At one point, the phrase car shadow car clones is said. It is shown on screen. This is a thing that happens. What? Like, apparently, this guy has the capability to fight on par with the Simpo Gear wielders, the magical girls of this show, and the only reason he can't is for some reason is basically that most of the enemies they fight are one touch you're dead if you are not a Simpo Gear wielder, which are all high school girls because reasons. Just, ah! <coughs> oh god, oh god. Oh god, I got so excited I nearly died. But yeah, this show is just... This show has this weirdest sort of... Just... The tone of this show is weird. But at the end of the day, this isn't a bad show. Like I said, I have an incredibly short attention span. And I managed to binge this entire show without within a week. And this thing has... um four or five seasons. I'm blanking on the exact number. I'll, you know what? Let's just look on my iPad. Nope, that's the settings. We want to go to the actual channel. I don't care. Why would I care about... No, go away. I don't care about Care Bears. Go away. Why are you yelling about me? What? what? Nope. Okay, well, I guess my, my thing is just not going to work with me now. That's great. That's fine. But yeah, there's four to five seasons, and I binge the entire thing, and it's just... Things that are super great about this are the animation. Some of the older stuff looks a bit janky, but that's more because it's older animation, not because it's bad in any way. The transformation sequences, especially in this season, are really great. And I just can I just say that, again, like... One of the girls has what can only be described as a pole dance henshin. The phrase pole dance henshin is something you can say in addition to the series, and it's honestly one of my favorite transformations. It's just... Ah! <coughs> Excuse me while I just die for a bit. But yeah, this show is great. It's fantastic. The animation is great. The characters are a bit generic, but th they're, they're likable. I like them. There are a couple of times... There are a couple of things that I don't like, though. A few of the cons is, like I said, this is kind of sort of a, the generic side, and it really shows. There are certain times where you just look at a character and go, Oh, that character's gonna turn traitor. Or there's, like, there's certain plot beats that are followed through, like... It's like, there are certain plot threads, like, on the second season, there is a group of characters, a couple of a uh, rival group of Simpho Gear wielders, their leader, and the scientist. And the scientist makes that one scientist face that makes you go, oh, you're just crazy. At some point, you're just going to be like you're doing it for the lols or you're going to do it for the science and you don't care about shit like morals and it's going to be a problem. And guess what? <coughs> 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 
I'll give you three guesses what the climax of the second season has to do with. You guessed it, probably. But still, I think the ben the con the pros outweigh the cons. I can't really talk now. I'm currently dying. Also, I'm really excited to talk about this show because I can't remember the last time I binged a multi-season show like this and it thoroughly enjoyed every moment of it. And it's great. Now, there are a few weird things about this show. I did some research into it, very light research, and apparently they couldn't, they, when they got the rights to the whole show, for some reason they couldn't release the whole show. So all the seasons, except for the last two, are up fully. The currently airing season is currently on episode 8, and the season before that is currently on episode 10. And I'm not sure why this is. I'm not sure what's going on with this fact. I'm not sure why this is happening. But for the most part, like, uh, if you watch the last season, if you start it, there are a few spoilers for what happens in the pre in the second to last season. But really, considering at what point they are and the fact that there is another season, it's probably a pretty easy to see what happens, to guess what happens at the end of the season. So it's like a minor spoiler, but at the same time, this kind of follows a generic Magical Girl show structure. So it's like... I kind of knew this was happening. I'm still interested in seeing how it happens because the fight scenes are real hype and I really want to see this. But yeah. Also, another potential breaking point. The J-pop. One of the creators of this show is a J-pop artist. And it shows. Because each and every girl gets her own J-pop song that they sing. Sometimes they mix together in interesting ways. In other points, they have certain attacks that have their own J-pop songs. Like, this is a show about m magical girls who get their powers through singing, and each and every one, and it's made by a J-pop, one of a uh, someone heavily into the J-pop making. A, a, a J-pop, there is someone who actually makes music and is involved with the creation of music, is heavily involved with this show, and there is a lot of J-pop. And if you don't like J-pop, this show's gonna be a bad time. Also, what's it like to be a fan of anime who doesn't like J-pop? Because that seems like it would be a weird, painful, interesting experience. And if you want to talk about that, comment down below. But yeah, Simpho Gear. It's a good Magical Girl show with some ace and hype animation. It's a bit generic. The, it's a bit by the beats if it's honestly it's a if you like the magical girl genre and you want to see something a bit different uh if you want to see something with a bit more of a mature take on it but that still has all the light-hearted motive moments of a traditional magical girl show give this thing a watch it's a really good show i really like it but again there are a couple of cons story is a bit on the generic side and again they haven't released all the episodes for all the seasons, so at the, I I say at the point they're at with the second to last season, that it's pretty much a given what's gonna happen, and you can probably guess what's gonna happen even without having watched the newest season. But still, some people might not like that. Some people might want to wait until all 13 episodes to the season have been come out. But at the same time, it's just a really good show. Like, the only real breaking point I can think of is if you don't like J-pop, if that's going to be a deal breaker for you, then this show might not be for you. Uh, but anyways, it's just, uh, this uh, this show is just so good. I love it. Anyways, that's been me, Juan John John. This has been Juan More Video. If you like it, like it. If you disliked it, there's a button for that too. Be sure to comment with just your opinions on this video, your opinions on Civ Folk Gear, any other shows I could watch that are similar in this sort of dissonant tone that I kind of really like. Or just comment about things I could improve on. This is my first video about anime in a while. I used to do these videos, but all of them got copyright strike and it was annoying and I'm trying something a bit different seeing how this works out. But yeah, you do you. Also, subscribe for more videos. I'm going to hopefully make some more. But anyways, that's been me for the day. Juan John John. I shall see you all later. Goodbye.